what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of State Farm. Today's video will be breaking down the Week Zero game between Florida State and Georgia Tech. We finally did it. We made it all the way through the offseason. We made it through from the last game from Michigan winning that championship. It's been a very long time, January all the way to August. It's been seven whole months, and we finally made it to Week Zero. Week Zero isn't the best slate of games, it's only a couple games, but this is the biggest game. An ACC, a Power Four conference game uh, within each other. Florida State, the reigning AC championship. Uh, they have got missed out of college football playoff. They got a bad taste left in their mouths from that game. Uh, they got blown out by Georgia in the bowl game. A lot of people opted out. So Florida State's had to live with that for a while now. I know their fan base has been very active on Twitter about it. Uh, and with the new expanded playoff, they should benefit from it. Uh, we also have Georgia Tech, who's an up-and-coming program. Um, Brent Key took over. He's entering his third year as the head coach. They had one of the best seasons in recent history. Not the best season in numbers-wise, but with it, if you're in the program, you know it's better than what it's been. And that's exactly what Brent Key has done. I'll go through my three keys for this game. Uh, and then I'll go through and make my prediction. Uh, the three biggest keys for this game start off with number one. Who will be the better quarterback between DJ Angoulet and Hayes King? Uh, starting off with DJ U. Started off at Clemson for three seasons, former five star recruit. And at Clemson, he didn't have the best you know, statistics when it comes to that. Uh, but he definitely, you know, he got ran out of town by, by Clemson fans. He threw for 5,681 yards, 36 touchdowns, and 17 interceptions over three seasons. Definitely not what you want to see, but he was a huge threat on the ground. They ran him out of town. He went over to Oregon State, turned around his whole entire career, uh, 2,638 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. He would have stayed at Oregon State if his head coach didn't leave. Uh, and the whole conference alignment thing and everything like that. So Florida State got a, one of the best quarterbacks in transfer portal. What I, you can say whatever you want to say about DJU, but it's going to be interesting to see how Jordan Travis, how they try to replace what Jordan Travis did. He was the leader of that team, four-year starter, one of the best quarterbacks in program history. You can't replace a guy like that. But DJU is more of a rental kind of like they do in the MLB, where you only get him for one year. That's kind of what DJU does. What is he going to bring to the table in week zero, this first game, how is he going to adjust to this offense? Are they going to use him with the ground more, use him with the pass? I think it's very interesting to see how they're going to use DJU. And then on the other side, you got Hayes King, who transferred from Texas A&M, uh, but played his first year at Georgia Tech last season. Threw for 2,842 yards, 27 touchdowns, but 16 interceptions. So not the best touchdown interception ratio. He'll have to clean that up, uh, to say the least, for sure. He also ran for 737 yards and 10 touchdowns. So Hayes King is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in college football, top five quarterback in the ACC. He doesn't get the credit he deserves when they talk about, you know, quarterbacks uh, in that department. But Hayes King is definitely one, and that is the number one key. Who is going to be the better quarterback on the side? Who is going to take care of the football better between Hayes King and DJU? They both shown that they can turn over the ball at very numerous times. DJU, not really the you know, he's got three touchdowns and one interception ratio last season, but he still had a lot of fumbles last year throughout his career. So I'll have to clean that up here. The second key will be can Georgia Tech improve defensively? Um, they were one of the worst defenses in all of college football last season and the worst in the AC last year. Uh, let's go through some statistics real quick. They were 13th out of 14th for points per game. Uh, 30 and a half defensively. They were last 14th in yards per game, 438.2. And they were last in rushing yards per game in the ACC, 225 yards per game. Uh, they brought in four defensive coaches, but it starts with Tyler Santucci, uh, defense coordinator. Uh, he was at Duke last season. Before that, he was at Texas A&M. Uh, so he's had the defensive coordinator role and job experience before. I think that's great to have on roster. That's great to have as a, uh, a coaching staff. Uh, last season at Duke, he had one of the best defenses in college football, and especially in the ACC. So that's great to have him within the conference and know how the ACC works from week to week out basis. You don't have to adjust, really. You already played a bunch of these teams last season. They will have to improve. They have a lot of veterans on this defensive line. Uh, they brought a lot of new faces uh, for the defensive back core. So how are they going to just gel and, and play together in week zero? Um, 
it's not the best defense that you're going to see. They're going to be way better week 12, week 13 than they are week zero. But how are they going to play within this week zero basis? Florida State lost a lot of offensively talent. So I think Georgia Tech can really use that to the advantage and get after them early and often and really get them to third down a lot. The last key is how is Florida State going to replace their offensive core? They lost Jordan Travis, like I said earlier, who's one of the best quarterbacks in Florida State history. They replaced him with DJU, who's got around 50 starts, so that's great for them. But how's he going to adjust in this offense? Uh, Trey Benson left from the NFL. They got Roy Dell Williams from the transfer portal. They also got Jalen Lucas from the transfer portal. So uh, how are they going to use those running backs? Is it going to be by committee? Jalen Lucas got to have more of a receiving option because he played run, uh, receiver and running back at Indiana. He's also a return specialist. So I think they can use Jalen Lucas in a lot of different scenarios. Um, but how are they also going to replace Keon Cohen and Johnny Wilson? They had two power forwards out there playing uh, receiver Keon Coleman, 6'4", Johnny Wilson, 6'7", uh, some would say. So how are they going to replace them? They got Malik Benson, Chess Portal. A lot of question marks when it comes to receiver because Keon Coleman won them the game against uh, LSU. Granted, LSU didn't play their best game, but Keon Coleman was messing up those DBs. He was playing, you know, one on none. They, you know, they call it the one on one drill. He was playing one on none. They were just throwing up the ball. He was taking slant routes to the crib. So I think how they're going to be offensively from the receiver position is one of the huge keys as well. For my prediction, I have Florida State at 34 and Georgia Tech 31. Uh, friends at Vegas, I think, have it at 11. Uh, but I think it's going to be closer than what people think. Week zero game, people are still trying to, you know, figure out their team, especially Florida State. They have a lot of transfers. They lost a lot of talents in the NFL from the ACC championship game. They, yes, they brought in a lot of talent, but how are they going to gel from a week zero game? They've had no game experience playing together. How are they going to play week zero against a conference opponent that's on the up and up? I think a lot of people are sleeping on Georgia Tech, but the thing I think that's going to separate Florida State for this game and their team in general is their defensive ends. Uh, Patrick Payton obviously returns. He thought about answering the portal. He stayed. Uh, he was very great last season uh, against across from Jared Verse. They also brought in Marvin Jones Jr. from Georgia. Uh, he th everyone thought he was going to go to Florida State and then flip last second to Georgia. I think these two defensive ends are going to be really huge in the ACC, and it's going to start week zero. Uh, but that's all I have for today's video. Comment below what you guys think of this game. What are you guys' thoughts on Georgia Tech and Florida State, uh, especially over there in Ireland, 12 uh, 12 p.m. kickoff on ESPN. I'm really excited to see this game. Excited to see the atmosphere in Ireland. I know a lot of people are just excited to have football back, and I definitely am. Comment down below what you guys think of the game. What do you guys think of DJU and versus Hayes King? Everything, like I said in that video. Uh, uh, like the video as well, and of course, subscribe to Stiff Farm. If you want to see more videos like this, I'm going to be doing previews, predictions, uh, reaction videos all up on the channel for the th season throughout. So if you guys want more of this video and you want to see more, subscribe to the Stiff Farm, uh, upcoming YouTuber of college football. So if you want to stay in touch with college football and everything going on like that, hit that subscribe button for your boy. That's all I have today's video. I'll see you guys next time.